Well, I have some experience in this. Uh, <laughs> I have some experience. I have some experience in you know getting my dicks up by crackheads. Um, <laughs> you know what? That's a good question. What was going through your head? I can tell you. You a nasty, sick ass white boy. What the fuck is so funny hearing another man getting his dicks up? <laughs> Target audience, who is listening to this shit? Who is that intrigued by another man getting his dicks up? <laughs> because they don't have no money. Right. Right? So you automatically got to think of what transaction works. Right. Oh. Oh, this is deep, boy. So you control people with transactions with money. Is that why you giving out so many jobs? Ooh. Yeah, so finally I got a, I figured out how to uh, switch the uh, camera. Um, this type of behavior is almost completely acceptable in our community now. You know, it, it was a time where we would not allow things like this as far as uh, this type of speech, language, uh, being in the so-called hip-hop community. Now it's... It, it, it's gotten to a point where I mean, if you do, if you don't have some type of uh, circus show to put on, you know, it's not it's not entertaining enough, you know. Uh, it's sad, but it's it's true. You know, this guy Andrew Schwartz or whatever his name his last name is, uh, pff, uh, you know, he's uh, I guess uh, Joe Rogan is, is uh, boys with him, but um, it's, I, I saw the interview with Dave Chappelle. And Joe Rogan was doing, uh, Joe Rogan was asking him questions about him. And Dave Chappelle was like, nah, he, he's not my type of guy, you know. And he, sh I mean, he shouldn't be anybody's type of guy in the hip hop community or in our community because, first of all, how did he get there? Second of all, what, listen to what he's saying. You know, look at who's endorsing him, you know. I'm going to listen to a little bit more and I'm just... It's just going to be a little short clip. I'm really just testing out this ability to switch the camera back and forth. <laughs> but I'm also listening to uh, Kwame, uh, what he has to say about that. Ooh. He said he controlled him with the money. And he's connected with all the smoke and a lot. He's giving out a lot of podcast contract. Allegedly, I think. I snapped. I don't know. Ooh, I wonder what he wants in return, boy, because who this shit finna get beat? I and if a woman crackhead is offering up some fellatio, mm, yes. it's kind of like a rite of passage. Like, you you do it. Like, it's a rite of passion. Pa what did he say? Passage? Passage, yeah. This is a married man going home to children and going home to a wife. So if, so if, if his wife or his daughter get on drugs, this is what you would expect for them? You love talking about sex, Mr. God. Yeah, I'm just gonna end it right here, but I, I gotta say, um, there's there's so many entertainers nowadays that say one thing and do the other or or do one thing and say the other I will even look at it but that's that's a prime example of uh what I'm talking about what Kwame just said you know you got a you got a wife and daughters at home but yet you're making your money by speaking about women the way you are hmm he's not the only one Think about this now. You got rappers out there that still, uh, after so many years of being in the in the business, you know, I can understand your first year or two, you saying certain things to get the the fan base up, but you're always 
the the thing that we want to see people like me and Kwame and so many other people we don't care so much about when you first get in the industry more so than what you do after you've been in the industry for for years now if you've been doing if you've been rapping for 20 years and you're still talking about killing bitches <laughs> hoes uh slinging rock pyrex and you've been in the business for 20 years you know that that's you know at, at some point we got to ask ourselves you know what is this what are you really doing you should have money by now but yet you're putting out toxic you know information to destroy our, our community you know if you're LL Cool J, I don't expect LL Cool J. Well, I can't use LL for example because LL has always had decent music. But I'll use somebody. Uh, fuck it, I'll say Snoop. You know, Snoop came out with Doggy Style. That was his first album. If Snoop still came out with music like a whole album of, you know, Gin and Juice and, um, you know, one song with his, you know, bitches ain't shit but hoes and tricks. Uh, that wasn't on Doggy Style, that was another song. But if that was still Snoop thing, you really got to ask yourself, what is Snoop Dogg doing? You know? So we got to start paying attention to our, our so called leaders, our so called entertainers, and see what they're doing too. Because on a, on a larger scale, these, these people have uh, influence, you know way bigger than what you can imagine you know when you have four million five million followers subscribers or whatever you call it you gotta ask yourself and these people are smarter than the average person why are you still making this destructive music instead of constructive music after all these years after all this time you know if uh what's the guy name the guy from Florida that just got out of prison not too long ago, Kodak Black. If Kodak Black was around 20 years from now and he was still making the same type of music, you know, you got to ask yourself, that's that's the real agent, you know what I mean? We like to call people agents, but, you know, guys who are in their 40s, 50s, those are the real agents who are trying to deliberately destroy the black community. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go and upload this video here. This is my second video. Um, still pretty early. You guys will have a great Sunday evening. Uh, if you're liking the content, like, subscribe, uh, share, and uh, check out my books on my website. I'll put it in the description. Y'all have a good one.